Hello friends, uh, today we're gonna solve a quantum mechanics physics paper, C11 paper of 2021. Uh, I have already made two videos on it, uh, links are given in the description box, part one and part two. So this is part three, this is part three and uh, in this video we are going to solve from question number six. So before we start, please subscribe the channel if you are new to my channel and share with your friends and if you like my videos hit the thumbs up button and also hit the bell icon so that you get notified when new video will be uploaded so now let's start hello friends so this is question number six so you will get the answer of this question in my old video just go to the playlist of quantum mechanics and uh, watch this video particle in one dimensional infinite square wheel potential and the uh, answer will be completed within the uh, 12 minutes 51 second or you may click the video link that i have given in the description box that's just i have written question number six answer then i put the i had put the link there okay you can click that link top this uh, video okay so now let's move on to question number seven so this is the question number seven write down the, uh, the schrodinger equation of a uh, one dimensional harmonic oscillator and what is the energy of this oscillator when is in the uh, eigen state associated with the quantum mechanics number n discuss the significance of its uh, zero point energy so here is the schrodinger equation uh, of uh, one dimensional harmonic oscillator this is the schrodinger equation uh, and these are the meaning of the terms i have used in this equation okay and uh, energy of this oscillator when it is in the eigenstate associated with uh, the quantum number n is given by this expression okay and the significance of for the ground state is written here this is the significance right so just pause the video and uh, write the answer okay <coughs> so here mu is the effective mass of the oscillator and k is the you know force constant force constant e represents energy so x is the displacement right so this is the expression en for n instead uh, energy of the oscillator so n plus half reduce Planck's constant and omega where n is equal to 0 1 2 so on and the you know zero point energy is given by e0 half a cut omega that means uh, a cut is reduced plus constant this is called zero point energy okay it shows that even in the lowest state of harmonic oscillator uh, lowest state the harmonic oscillator has uh, finite energy okay the existence of this zero point energy is in agreement with the experiment and uh, is important for future of uh, quantum mechanics okay this is the significance so now let's go to the next question so here is the uh, same question question number seven you have to write the answer of this question or this question okay so here you can see the general and normalized uh, wave function for harmonic oscillator is given by this uh, psi of x psi n of x uh, this is the expression here h dot alpha x represents Hermit polynomial and uh, alpha is equal to this right so m k h cut whole to the power 1 by 4 k is the force constant you know that so so first uh, two normalized wave functions of the oscillator are so first two normalized wave functions of the oscillator are if you put uh, uh, n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 then you will get the uh, first two normalized wave functions and these are the wave functions and h dot when you put uh, n is equal to 0 then you will get its value is 1 and uh, h1 is 2 alpha x okay value of h1 uh, of alpha x is 2 alpha x right so we have used those value here h dot of uh, values of h dot uh, when you go uh, when we find psi dot 
and we have used h1 value of h1 when we have uh, determined uh, psi1 from this expression so now let's go to next question so this is the question number eight here the expectation value of square of the displacement harmonic oscillators is given by this expression okay this is the uh, you know expectation value of the squares of the displacement right so it is given by this expression right we need to find the expectation value of the potential energy so now you see potential energy of a harmonic oscillator is given by v is equal to half k x square where k is the force constant right so and first we have written the given data that uh, and let us give it equation number one okay so expectation value of potential energy that is v is given by integration from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, psi star sin star uh, that is uh, half k x square which is potential energy then psi n dx right so half n k these are constant so it can be taken out so these are can be taken out so we left with x square we did it and this expression represents the eigenvalue of uh, sorry expectation value of uh, squares of the displacement that is ex uh, expectation value of x square uh, which is already given right so we have used that result which is given using one okay and uh, so finally we have got this expectation value of uh, potential energy of harmonic oscillator so hope you have understood this now let's move on to the next question so here is the question number nine uh, you can see so write down the three uh, sorry time independent Schrodinger equation for the motion of the electron in hydrogen atom so let me tell you uh, sorry for my voice uh, because uh, you know my health condition is not good so today you may find uh, my, my voice is not so clear okay so assuming the proton to be at rest so we need to find uh, write the time independent Schrodinger equation of motion right so here is the Laplace operator uh, just uh, let me give you the answer okay so here you see this is the Schrodinger equation uh, time independent Schrodinger equation of uh, for the motion of uh, electron in a hydrogen mm -hmm. atom this is uh, you can start with equation number one I haven't changed the equation uh, numbers I, I given in the book I have just uh, t I, I took the photo and uh, just paste here so you can change as you want okay so you can start with equation number one if i if i had changed this uh, i had to change all so i haven't uh, done that so just uh, i have given you the answer so you can start with equation number one so now you see in the question it is given that uh, separate the Schrodinger equation sep separate this equation uh, into uh, into one radial and two angular parts one radial and two angular parts so uh, in order to do that uh, so here you see so this is the uh, Laplace operator in polar form which was given in this uh, equation right in polar form so this Schrodinger equation it is in the Cartesian form so it is it is written in polar form okay so in the Cartesian form uh, in Cart when you have this uh, equation in Cartesian form it is not possible to separate in uh, the three parts one radial or two angular parts so that's why I have written this one in polar form right so now to separate we have considered that psi is a function of r theta and phi so let's uh, go to the next slide so here you see we have considered this phi is given by uh, these three functions product of these functions r is a uh, capital r is a function of a small r only q is a function of theta only f is a function of phi only and these two are the angular parts and this is the radial part okay so now if you substitute that phi is equal to capital r and uh, capital you see what we have written q capital q and uh, uh, capital f 
in the in the equation number five so equation let's go back to the previous slide equation number five so here you see this is the equation number five right so write the equation number as you want uh, according to you it might be it may be equation number three right so write yourself okay that uh, equation numbers so i have used that uh, psi is equal to Uh, I have uh, used this uh, psi is equal to product of these three in this equation. So then what we have got? And doing so, we have got this equation, right? Now, after simplification, we have got this step. Uh, I'm not going to explain each and every uh, simplification. The steps uh, here already, it is written what is being done here. So this is equation number eight so now you see right hand side of this equation number eight so let's go to the next slide so here you see this is as you tell wave equation uh, or the phi equation you can say the left side of equation number eight is a function of r and theta the right hand side is the function of phi only okay so therefore the right side of this equation number eight so here you see this this right hand side of this equation number eight this is a function of phi only and the right and left hand side is function of r and theta right so this equation number eight becomes uh, this so what is ml square is ml is given here orbital magnetic quantum number okay so now it is further simplified into this form right this is equation number nine so write the equation number according to your uh, what uh, what order you are taking okay so this is the first of the three differential equations uh, uh, called as you tell wave equation or phi equation you can say okay so now polar and radial wave equation you can see we have already in the previous slide we have already uh, got the as you tell part or phi equation which is equation number nine now let's come to polar or radial uh, polar and radial wave equation so equating the left hand side equation number eight left hand side of this equation number eight this is the equation number eight if you equate this left hand side of this equation so then what you will get uh, uh, to that's uh, ml square because uh, both side must be equal to the same constant then dividing it by a sine square theta we get this and transporting the second term on the left hand side so transporting the second term on the left hand side this second term on the left hand side to the right side we get this after simplification we have got this equation equation number 10 so in the next slide here you see uh, so the left side of the equation is a function of r only while the right side is a function of theta only hence the both sides of the equation must be equal to the same constant we denote this constant by suppose beta so and doing so we have got these two equations right we have got these two equations so here this equation is called polar wave equation or theta equation this uh, this equation number 11 is called uh, polar wave equation or theta equation this is the polar form and this is the radial form okay so we have got these three equations uh, we, we have separated the Schrodinger equation in this three form this is the uh, polar form and uh, this is the angular form and another is this is another angular form two angular form one radial form so this yeah. is the answer to question number nine so hope you have understood stay connected remaining questions will be solved in the next video and uh, thank you for watching and uh, stay connected if you are new to my channel please subscribe the channel and share the videos and hit the like button also hit the bell icon so that you get notified when the new video will be uploaded Okay, so see you in the next video.